Welcome back everybody, Phil here. Thanks for joining me for our tutorial series on building a neural network from scratch. When we left off in the last episode, we had just finished our neural network model and we discovered that only after 50 epochs, or maybe it was 100, we had an accuracy of around 91%, which is pretty good. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's actually pretty terrible, right? I mean, it's good because it's such a naive model, but bad because the accuracy is reasonably low. And I'm going to show you that we can actually extract, extract much more from this very simplistic model just by allowing it to run for a little bit longer. And then we're going to plot that data at the end to see how it looks. So to do that, we have to keep track of our cost and the prediction accuracy between epochs. So to do that, we're going to want to take our total cost and move it up here, right? And we also want to bring our predicted accuracy array up so that way we can return it. And let's just define this as an array of zeros of length epochs. So for every epoch, we're going to record some prediction accuracy. And this has to be a NumPy array because of the return type of the accuracy quantity right here. So the NP sum returns an ND array and due to the way the memory is managed if you don't declare this at the beginning as a NumPy array of zeros and actually assign indices of the array you're going to end up overriding elements. So basically you end up returning a reference to an object instead of an object itself. So we're going to get rid of this print statement because we don't need it. And we're going to say that the prediction, prediction accuracy of the ith epoch is just this quantity here. This NP sum, right, that gives us our fractional accuracy. Let's multiply by 100 so that we have it in percent. And we can go ahead and get rid of this because we no longer need it and let's um, go ahead and indent these Whoop. these of course have to be indented because they're at the so they line up with the um, for loop of the epochs of course and just because I'm a little bit pedantic let's go ahead and put the print statement at the end so that way we print when we're done doing everything we need to do for the epoch and so now, instead of returning, we are going to return the total cost and the predicted accuracy. And so we need to modify this. Say something like cost and accuracy equals run model. And then we're going to want to plot this data. Right? But all we've returned is the y-axis, essentially. So let's go ahead and make our x axes with the list comprehension <clears throat> the <clears throat> excuse me so we want the x sub predict let's call this x sub a so that way it's more clear x sub accuracy and x sub cost equals i for i in range len of cost so that way we have an X array that's just zero to whatever number of epochs, sorry, epochs times the batch size that we have. So then we can plot this. So this 221 is your shorthand for the top left corner. Check out the matplotlib documentation for details on that, but this will print out two plots with this array X sub C on the x-axis for the top left corner and then we can do the same thing x sub a and accuracy and then we can show the plot and so what we're going to see is how the um, how the accuracy and the cost evolve over time so just so we get quick output, let's just change it to 10 epochs instead of 100, and then run this again. Oh, I put in some debug code here. Haha. -ha. 
I was attempting to debug last night and left that in. So anything else wonky going on? I don't think so. And so now it's going to run for 10 epochs and spit out our graphs, and we should see how that looks. So here you have, let's, max, let's make this larger. So on the left you have the cost as a function of batch size times epoch, right? Because if you look at the code, we are recording the, we are appending the cost every step in our batch. So every 50, these batch sizes is 50, so every 50, um, every 1200 training samples, sorry, 60,000 divided by 50 is 1200. So every 1200 samples we're recording a cost. And you can see there is a rather steep drop off here. It starts to, to really get some, uh, it, it performs quite well after only a, a handful of runs and you can see the accuracy trends up even after 10 epochs. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this run for a thousand epochs and I'll pause the video so that way you don't have to sit here for 10 minutes while it runs but we'll run this for a thousand epochs so we can see how the data looks at the end and I'm going to show you that you get actually really good accuracy from this very basic model even after, uh, sorry, we're just letting it run for a few more epochs. So let's go ahead and get that started. So we'll say 1000 epochs and we'll let that run again. And that's all we'll have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause that here and I'll see you guys in a second. So we're just about done here and I wanted to show you guys what the resource usage of this little piece of software you wrote looks like. So. I'm running an i7-3770 with a light overclock at 4.2 gigahertz and I'm pretty much maxing out four of my threads running this program and that's kind of interesting how it hops around the the workload among the threads but if you have slower hardware this may run for quite a bit of time on a more modern CPU in other words something from like the last five years it's not going to be too bad um, and there are probably some things we could do to speed this up, but you can see that the resource usage uh, isn't too terrible, and it's taken me about 10 minutes, a little over 10 minutes to run this, which isn't so bad considering the amount of calculations we're doing. And this is just straight up on the CPU. If you were using a TensorFlow implementation, this would be much quicker because it relies on the GPU. So let's take a look here in a second and see what the output looks like. Do, 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 do. Okay, so here you can see that our cost has the same precipitous drop off, and again it's 50 batches times a thousand epochs, so this goes up to 50,000 and it levels off almost at zero cost. So our, our algorithm does a good job at converging over time, and even better, you can see that the accuracy crosses this 95% line. So we're getting better than 95% accuracy. And so I just wanted to show you that even our very basic naive implementation of a neural network with only two hidden layers and only 75 units does a really good job of fitting the data and it didn't take much time to code at all. So in future videos we're going to look at how you can improve this with uh, playing around with things like the learning rate, this ADA, as well as the model parameters themselves. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys like the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video.